good morning and welcome we will uh, continue with our study on the prophetic ministry uh, let's pray and uh, get started with, with today's session i uh, want to request uh, one of us to please lead in prayer let's pray Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you under the name of Jesus. We thank you for this day. We thank you for the class we are about to have. Lord, we thank you that you are a God who speaks with us. You are a God who reveals things to us. You are a God who wants to have a great relationship with us. God, as we are about to listen to the truths of your word, help us to open our heart and mind and listen to every word the pastor teaches so that we can understand your truth in a better way and we can uh, shine much more better for your glory jesus i i give this entire class into your hands be with us and guide us give us good wi-fi connection throughout the session and let everything we do be done for your glory in jesus name we pray amen Amen. Amen. Thank you, uh, Jafina. Um, so we were talking about hearing from God. And in the last class, I said that we will take some time today to practice hearing from God. Uh, so what I'll do is I will take us through chapter nine and then we shall pause. We will um, you know, pray and, and give words if uh, there, there is someone here on the call uh you know that uh, they may relate with that particular word so uh here in chapter nine we talk about hearing from the holy spirit through our spiritual senses now something we must understand is that god has created us spirit soul and body so we are a tripartite being as we read in first thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 23 and uh, the spirit part of us uh, is the eternal, eternal part. Uh, uh, this is the part that God generally uses for us to hear from him. Now in scripture, the spirit is generally uh, termed as belly, innermost being, or sometimes interchangeably as the heart of the man. But it's actually talking about the um, the inner person it's talking about the spirit of the individual sometimes uh, the you know some people may just uh, end up using it to, talk, to refer to the soul also but in the bible generally it is about the spirit that uh, you know this this inner man is talking about the soul part of us we say that um, uh, it's the psychological part where we have the mind the will and the emotions uh, so in the soul part of us we uh, already know that we can feel we can think we can reason and so on um, now when it comes to the soul part of us uh, the bible has so much to say where we must uh, renew our mind we must uh, not walk with uh, carnal desires or we must not have fleshly lusts in the soul uh, and you know we must align it to the purposes of god in the body we have senses the five uh, natural senses that we talk about you know um, we are able to see we're able to hear we're able to smell we're able to taste we're able to feel touch right so these are the normal senses of the human body when it comes to the spirit now the bible says that god generally speaks to our spirit the holy spirit reveals truth to our human spirit god has chosen okay god has chosen to lead us and guide us so the holy spirit has a way of communicating with us we see passages such as uh, john chapter 16 verses 13 through 15 romans 8 verse 14 which talk about god leading us by his holy spirit how does this communication come that's the question uh, which we are asking right now the way god communicates is primarily through our human spirit proverbs 20 
and verse 27 says that the spirit of a man is a lamp of the Lord and he lights it up. So it's you can imagine it like a candle. Okay. Now what happens is when we light up a candle, you you would uh, you would have light. If you switch off the candle, there's no light. So we can understand this scripture as God communicates to us. So that's like lighting up the candle. And there's illumination, there's revelation, there's light. So it's basically just saying that God has chosen the spirit of a man to enlighten. So that's how it works. There are other passages that also talk about the communication of God to the human spirit. Uh, uh, Psalm 18 and verse 28, uh, it says, For you will light my lamp, the Lord my God will enlighten my darkness. So you see there again, lighting up the lamp is nothing but bringing revelation to the human spirit. And that happens by the Holy Spirit. And there is another uh, scripture here, Psalm 42 and verse 7, where we read that deep calls unto deep. So what does God do? You know, God uh, deposits something in the human spirit through his spirit. And that is why uh, it says that the deep calls unto deep. Because in, in a sense, the spirit is the deepest part of us the spirit is the innermost being okay so uh that's how we understand the way god actually communicates with our spirit fine so let's uh, continue from here we'll talk about the uh five spirit senses uh, just give me one moment I i'll be All right, so I'm going to share my screen here um, that has all the spirit senses and it will just help us understand things better. Yeah, I hope you can see it now. All right, uh, now that you can see it, it's a lot easier to discuss. This might be a different page number in your notes. I'm using the PDF version and this PDF version I downloaded you know, quite a while ago. So there are probably updates to this. Uh, but uh, you can go to chapter 9 and uh, you can find this particular um, you know, pictorial uh, depiction of the spirit senses so we've been saying that you know soul seats our mind will and emotions that we understood then the body body has the five um, normal human senses even that we understood the body sometimes is called as the outer man and uh, the spirit is called as the inner man. The Holy Spirit communicates with our spirit. He bears witness with our spirit is what Romans 8, 16 says. And uh, the spirit man also has senses. And uh, we could even look at these senses as parallel senses. So. 
we mean that when we say that the body can feel, the spirit can also feel. The body can hear, the spirit can also hear. Similarly, every other sense there, the sense of seeing, the sense of a uh, taste, the sense of smell, right? So uh, the spirit is able to pick up these things. Uh, and it is said that maybe the human spirit has many more senses and not just the five senses which we compare with the uh, bodily senses of us. So how do these senses work? We will get into it. But before we get into that, one thing that I want to state is that the human spirit, it picks up the communication of God because it is the lamp of the Lord. We saw that and God lights it up. So uh, the spirit is the lamp of the Lord and he lights it up or he brings communication to the spirit. Now, once the communication comes, each of us needs to be able to use the soul part of us to do what? To uh, try to understand what God is saying, uh, you know, try to recognize the meaning of what has been communicated to us, then uh, to think that, uh, you know, how should we take this message? If it's meant for somebody else, then how do I take that message? How do I communicate it in the appropriate way? So all of this will go on within the soul. So for us to say that, yeah, when it comes to prophesying, uh, the human spirit is everything and uh, it really doesn't matter, you know, regarding our soul uh, or our body. Uh, that wouldn't be true because uh, the spirit, soul and body have to kind of work together. And obviously, you know, once uh, we have determined what action to take, the body has to cooperate and then we have to uh, go ahead and do that. So that's how it generally works. The communication of the Lord comes and we analyze it or here they have, uh, it, it is written as a reason, analyze, determine action and the outer man will do what is required. So now we've understood that the spirit has senses also and it can receive the communication of the Lord. Now, uh, one other thing that we must remember is this particular verse which has been uh, written here. This is one of the most significant scriptures that we will need when we talk about the gift of prophecy. So 1 John chapter 5 and verse 7. Could somebody please read it out aloud for us? 1 John chapter 5 and verse 7. One John chapter five. Can I know the verse? Yes. Yeah. Uh, First John chapter five and verse seven. Verse seven. Yeah. For so there are three that bear witness in heaven: the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. Okay. So there are three that bear witness: the Father, the what is the second one? Jeffina? The Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. The Word and the Holy Spirit. Yeah, the Word and the Holy Spirit. So, uh, when you see there, you know, there, there is the sort of synchrony of the Father, and then whether your version, I was just trying to check, you know, which version you're reading from because you said the Son. Um, so, uh, but of course, you can equate that with the Word of God. So the Son or the Word and the Holy Spirit. Now, in uh, some uh, translations, you find that the way this has been uh, put together is that the uh, Spirit and the Word, they agree. Okay. So uh, 
our understanding is that whenever we prophesy, it comes from the Holy Spirit. It comes from the Holy Spirit of God. But then what happens is the word or the message which the Spirit is bringing to us, it will be in alignment alignment with what the word actually says so thank you uh, divya divya has posted here from the niv version and uh, here it says for well, there are three that testify the spirit the water and the blood um, and the three are in agreement is this seven or eight uh, divya that was eight first yeah that that must be verse eight okay but anyway the significance is that the word and the spirit are in agreement so the way uh, uh, this will this will apply to us is whenever we have a word of prophecy you know sometimes people say the holy spirit is saying the holy spirit is saying and then they come up with all kinds of messages now if that message is not aligned with what the word says now, yes, we may not have a scripture and a verse exactly, you know, to go with the uh, prophecy that we are saying, but it is in the uh, within the boundaries of the word of God. It's not outside the boundary. For example, I gave us an uh, example a few classes ago, and I said that, uh, you know, there was a prophecy to a uh, 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 married individual saying that, oh, you know, you're married to the wrong person. You should be uh, thinking about getting, uh, you know, married to another person because that's the right person God has in mind for you. But we know that a word like that, when you look at the Bible, you look at the uh, the understanding of the marriage covenant once somebody is in a marriage covenant you know how can the holy spirit guide you in a way that is in contrast to the written word of god okay so it cannot be a prophecy from the holy spirit okay because it is causing the individual to err and that is against the word of god so that would never be uh, you know something that has been picked up but from the Holy Spirit. So this has to be our test always. We hear a word in the soul part of us. The moment we hear a word in the soul part of us, we have to go through the checking process where we say, okay, where is it in the Bible? Uh, uh, how how um, is it aligned to the word of God? Now, if we can clarify that, okay, yes, you know, this is very much aligned to the word of God, then we go ahead, we take the action, we might share the word with someone or uh, do whatever is needed. So this is how we would be uh, taking, the, we would be treating a word of prophecy. Okay. So now coming to the different senses and the way the words are picked up, here is a summary. Uh, we will kind of go through it again. Uh, when you talk about feel, there are examples such as, uh, you know, Paul states that I am stirred in my spirit. Um, or, you know, he says, I, I am pressed in my spirit. So in the spirit, there are all these feelings. And each of these feelings means something. Just the way in our natural uh, natural senses, you know, our soul part, when we say, hey, I'm feeling joyful, I'm feeling um, happy. It means something. So similarly, in the spirit, God can give us feelings and those feelings can be an indication of what God wants us to do. Now, coming to the sight part, there are different, uh, you know, we with the perception of sight, we can pick up different forms of communication. There can be still images, which we call as pictures, or there can be, uh, uh, you know, more like a video sort of uh, an image, motion picture, where you can see an entire incident taking place. So that would be either a dream, a dream is what you would uh, see uh, when one is sleeping, or it can be 
a vision we we use the term vision for generally you know a time when uh, somebody is not sleeping and yet they are picking up uh, some such uh, you know uh, communication from god there can be a trance a trance is when uh, the body loses its strength okay uh, and the person is actually receiving a vision so that is known as a trance there are even uh, other experiences such as out of body seeing in the spirit realm so the spirit man can see then we have hearing the sense of hearing and we have talked about it earlier we said that uh, one can pick up uh, maybe a word or sometimes even a sentence uh, we could pick up more like remember we said like a download of information with uh, people have said that they've written entire books you know with that kind of information that has come into their spirit uh, and generally there is no audible voice associated with the the hearing uh, it's usually maybe it comes in like a visual uh, like a word which is written but then you know we know that it's actually the sense of hearing sometimes one can hear it audibly okay so that's how uh, these senses are described we can go back and we can you know talk more about uh, the other uh, senses uh, a little later so just a moment i'll uh, you know rotate this page and come back to you All right. I hope that was uh, helpful. Now we will uh, continue to talk about these senses a little more elaborately. But at this point, are there any thoughts or anything that uh, you wanted to check about right away? Of course, uh, we'll discuss more in detail soon. Oh, okay. Trans. Okay. So, uh, trans. Uh, just a moment. So, I think the passage is Acts chapter ten, maybe. Yeah, Acts ten. Yes. So, uh, Divya, here in Acts chapter 10 um, and verse, yes, verse 10, Acts 10, verse 10. I'll just post it here in our chat for you. Yes. So, there is the passage. It says, then he became very hungry and uh, wanted to eat. But while they made ready, he fell into a trance. So, a trance is a state, as I told us, that the body is kind of, you know, weak in those moments. Weak or you could say that uh, uh, one is having such a spiritual connect with the spiritual realm that the senses of the body, the strength of the body seems to have been, uh, uh, you know, weakened temporarily. Uh, so that's the experience which Peter had. Uh, so you can imagine this as something like, you know, he may have, he may have become, it may look like he's unconscious. Okay. Uh, but what's happening is spiritually there is activity going on that he's able to perceive. And in this case, he perceives a vision from God um, where he sees uh, all kinds of animals brought down to him. And then God is telling him, rise, Peter, kill and eat. 
the significance of which is uh, that he must not discriminate against the gentiles if god has accepted you know now god is telling him look you can accept all animals uh, uh, this was in contrast to what was spoken to them earlier uh, in the you know the food laws which were given to the children of israel uh, and so god was implying the way i am telling you to accept all animals i'm telling you that you can accept all communities uh, even the gentiles and then it leads to uh, peter actually going and ministering to a gentile uh, centurion known as cornelius so uh, that's how it works uh, divya trance is when your body seems weakened but there is significant spiritual activity is that okay so when one is seeing a vision uh the bodily functions are normal you could say like you know strength wise uh yeah sure sure pastor so uh so is, does it mean like in you know, a vision or a dream like the senses that are involved is my sight or you know seeing but in a trance it's like everything is every other part like of the spirit like other senses of the spirit are involved uh not like that uh the vr see for example if you take a contrast between trance and vision in a vision the bodily senses or or the the way the functions of the body may remain normal for example i could be walking on the street and i receive a vision i could be worshiping the lord and i receive a vision okay but uh, what about my my physical abilities i'm still standing i'm still walking uh, or whatever i'm doing you know i could be writing i could be typing uh, uh, on my computer and see a vision so nothing has happened to my physical abilities but in case of a trance it's like the person you might see that the person looks almost unconscious you got it the, the physical abilities are gone momentarily okay okay got it got it yeah yes. it's yeah. like that so, so is it uh, is it only recorded uh, portion in the bible regarding a trance is it only uh, i yeah and even in the in the pdf i saw acts 10 Uh, uh -huh. are there any other do we know like uh, any... i can think of the first one that i can think of is adam when uh, you know god put him to sleep it says so he must have been in a trance like state is is my guess okay uh so yeah uh the other ones uh, can anyone think of other trances Ezekiel uh, did he have any trance Okay uh right away I'm not able to uh, uh recall uh, Divya but I I'll let you know Sure sure pastor thank you yeah. thank you so sure. much All right so that's how a trance is compared to maybe a vision or or some other communication so let's get into each one one by one so when it comes to the sense of feeling um uh, as i already shared there can be a certain feeling indicative of what god wants us to do so i might have a positive feeling or a negative feeling so positive could be uh you know we we uh, are making some decisions in the ministry or for the family and we have a sense of joy we have a sense of quietness a sense of peace in our spirits so uh, notice there is uh, there is a uh, a difference this is in the spirit not so much in the emotions but sometimes it's hard to uh, tell where that boundary is so uh, we may not know hey am i feeling this in my spirit am i feeling this in my emotions but you know we can take some time we can check it out and then we will be able to tell uh, the spirit 
feeling can also sort of you know uh, overflow into our emotions but we must uh, understand what's happening in the spirit where uh, or that sense of feeling in the spirit because we we may be making a decision on the basis of that so a positive emotion can be picked up in the spirit where one feels a sense of peace or a sense of rest quietness joy or and all of that or there can be a negative sense what is that a negative sense can be uh, some discomfort uh, some uneasiness or restlessness in the spirit or we might feel uh, the way paul said right he said like i was provoked in my spirit when he saw idols uh, he, he's in athens he was really angry that uh, oh people don't know about god over here uh, and this is the way in which god was guiding him and leading him and showing him where he must minister so we can pick it up either a positive one or a negative one so uh, when we know how to identify uh, that will then stir us to action so there are examples given here in our notes peace where colossians 3:15 says and let the peace of god rule and reign in your hearts remember i mentioned that earlier the term heart is sometimes interchangeably used for the inner person or uh, the uh, spirit of a person so let the peace of god rule and reign uh, stirred provoked in the spirit we we uh, said that paul had that experience compelled by the spirit so he felt that god wanted him to go know to a certain region and he testifies of that bound in the spirit when he was moving towards jerusalem he knew that he will be in prison so it's a very uncomfortable feeling which he had and he describes it as i felt bound in the spirit so the holy spirit was speaking to him in all these ways ezekiel uh shares his experiences where he says that you know uh, i had bitterness like he felt that sense of bitterness in his spirit uh, uh, or you know other things so uh, just to let us know that we can pick up all of these uh, they are not emotions but feelings in our spirit man that the spirit sense of seeing and i've already described that to us uh, so obviously this is a spirit sense of seeing can our natural eye also perceive it may or may not perceive uh, like in the case of uh, uh, elisha right uh, like in the case of okay in the case of elisha uh, he tells his uh, servant you go up on the mountain and you see so the first time he is not seeing anything uh, uh but like the second time when he goes he is able to see the armies of god which are which are there to back up you know elisha uh, and uh, uh, his team so uh, how how does he perceive it through his natural eyes so when we pick up information from god through the sense of seeing it can happen with or without our natural eyes okay uh, we we need to know that uh, now talking more about the sense of seeing uh, remember jesus so many times he said uh, uh, like he who has ears let him hear uh, he who has eyes you know let him see so uh, the people who heard jesus could have marveled and wondered what is he talking about we all have eyes why does he say you know if you have eyes to perceive well he was referring to the spirit eyes uh, and saying that a human being can perceive with their natural eyesight but there is something that god wants them to perceive with the spiritual eyesight so uh, through the spirit eyes one can pick up as i stated pictures visions uh, you know 
uh, and uh, different communication from God. So pictures, like uh, there are examples given here. Jeremiah, uh, God asked him, you know, what do you see? So Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 11 through 14. First, uh, he says, I see a branch of an almond tree. So you see there one picture, but that picture, you know, as we say, a picture speaks a thousand words. Through that, God was telling him, I'm getting ready to perform my word. And again, God asked him, what do you see? And Jeremiah said, I see a boiling pot facing away from the north. And God gave him the meaning of that and said, out of the north, calamity shall break forth on all the inhabitants of the land. So God is speaking through pictures. Even prophet Amos, uh, God asked him, okay, Amos, what do you see? And he said, okay, God, in uh, Amos chapter 8, verses 1 and 2, I see a basket of summer fruit. So God was giving him a message through that. What is the message? Message is, the end has come upon my people, Israel. I will not pass by them anymore. So notice, there is a picture and the picture has a meaning which God wants to communicate. So even now, when we pray for someone, we might see a picture. But that picture needs an interpretation. Or we must understand its meaning as to what God is actually wanting to say. Now, dreams. Uh, classic example is remember pharaoh he had dreams joseph was a wonderful dream interpreter so he interpreted pharaoh's dreams he interpreted the dreams of his co-prisoners uh, you know he was going about interpreting dreams and uh, uh, god in his word in job 33 we have seen this passage earlier now uh, he said that when a man sleeps, right, that God gives a dream, a vision of the night. Uh, and why is this? Because he wants to seal some information or instruction into one's being. And so that's what dreams do. Dreams also bring a communication from God. But dreams are, some people uh, also called uh, dreams as visions of the night okay or they also call dreams as shut eye visions or in other words see dream is a vision but it happens when a person sleeps basically because they are seeing uh, things happen but when they are asleep so that is a dream when you are awake and you are watching uh, some communication from god that's known as vision Okay, that's the simple difference between dream and vision. So vision, what is a vision? Uh, people like uh, Daniel, he had so many visions. He had, you know, the end time visions. When you read uh, the visions, it's amazing. There are kings in it and, you know, there is uh, uh, pictures of uh, uh, kingdoms and nations uh, and uh, each each one has uh, some interpretation and uh, meaning to it and so god was trying to communicate with them what about uh, somebody like uh, uh, apostle john you know when you read the book of revelation it's full of visions so uh, uh, john did not even interpret some of what is there so he has given it to us in pictorial language. You know, when he says I, uh, uh, he sees Jesus, his hair is like wool, his eyes are like fire. So he's explaining the pictures that he has got. You know, in the end times, there are, uh, he sees locusts flying, uh, the attacks coming on nations. Pictorial language. He just used the language he knew to describe the vision which he saw. And so like that, there are many visions. We just talked about uh, the trance which uh, Peter had. In that also, he sees a vision. He sees animals come down, right? Uh, and uh, of course, God gave him uh, the, the, the sense of what it meant uh, a bit later on. So 
these are the ways in which god communicates we might see a vision a vision uh, which then needs to be interpreted okay then seeing in the spirit realm seeing in the spirit realm remember we uh, started off with uh, balam uh, uh, about how he fell to the ground his eyes were opened he got the knowledge of the lord so bala uh, also is is uh, an individual uh, where we see that the lord opened bala's eyes it says so seeing into the spirit realm is possible as our spirit sense of seeing is uh, uh, you know opened up and uh, we can perceive and i gave you the example of elisha's servant he also sees into the spirit realm so there are two realities there's a spiritual reality the natural reality and uh, the servant sees the spiritual reality but the the uh, unique thing here is through his natural eyes so his natural eyes get the ability to look into the spiritual realm even that can happen okay uh, uh again uh, somebody who conti- who perceived in the spiritual realm is isaiah you know isaiah how he saw the throne of god uh, the lord was sitting on his throne throne and his robe filled the temple so he describes that entire vision uh, and you know that's another example out of body we said that isn't it so out of body ezekiel is a good example where ezekiel he says that the uh, that the lord came upon me and brought me out in the spirit of the lord and set me down in the midst of the valley and it was full of bones so it's as if ezekiel was brought to a certain place where while he is actually at another place so in the spirit it almost felt like you know he is going from one place to the other and perceiving different things that are happening in a another uh, uh, geographical location so ezekiel shares experiences like that uh all right uh, and uh, there's one more passage in the book of corinthians where you know you uh, see that paul Uh, states that somebody had somebody had this experience you know whether in the body or uh, uh, in the body i do not know or whether out of the body i do not know such a one was caught up to the third heaven so uh, that also see even paul is affirming that there are two possibilities that people may may physically be uh, able to go some place because of a supernatural phenomenon or the spirit can kind of uh have an out of body experience uh, and so these things happen and we shouldn't consider them as abnormal so i'll just come here to our uh chat section uh roslyn shared apostle john in revelation yeah so the trance experience um paul uh, brother paul is asking what about travelling so travelling brother john is uh, uh, uh paul is an intense form of prayer okay now it may be accompanied with visions or may not be accompanied with visions but it is an intense form of seeking the lord it's an intense form of prayer that's what travelling is coming to what the via is saying uh, there is another trance recorded in acts 22 when i returned to jerusalem and was praying in the temple i fell into a trance okay yeah the via that's right it uh, says that and saw the lord speaking to me quick he said leave jerusalem immediately because the people here will not accept your testimony about me okay thank you so uh, there's another example of trance so so far we have discussed about the sense of feeling and the sense of seeing uh, so would anyone like to talk more about it in the next session we'll go on to hearing and other senses
okay so uh in that case i understand that uh, you know you have uh you got the essence of what i'm saying so then let me just touch upon the spirit sense of hearing uh going back to what jesus said he who has ears let him hear uh you know and then even revelation 27 he who has an ear let him hear what the spirit says to the churches so it's talking about the spirit man and the ability to hear in the spirit uh now i've shared that when we hear from god we may have this idea that we will hear a voice but it usually doesn't happen like that some examples of course are there like samuel when god said samuel samuel and uh, he heard a voice uh, but in most other instances we may pick up words in our spirit so something like uh, you know uh, when we are praying we may see the word comfort you know uh, which now in the uh, in prophecy you would see that god has a certain way of communicating you might perceive it in your spirit or you might see that word maybe uh, appearing before their face or appearing on top of their head or something like that but you get the point that god is saying there is something uh, related to comfort you know that needs to be uh, addressed to a particular individual so that's how we we pick up the word we may see the word comfort or we may sense the word comfort in our spirit or it can be a sentence if you recall uh, when uh, uh, you know philip he was going and doing his ministry in acts chapter 8 uh, the spirit said to philip acts 8:29 a sentence comes into Uh, Philip's spirit, and that sentence is go near and overtake this chariot. It's not like he heard a voice telling him that sentence, but in his spirit he perceived, okay, do this an entire sentence, and then he went and he found the uh, Ethiopian eunuch, and he was able to share more about. Uh, he was able to explain about Jesus uh, uh, when uh, that person was reading a passage from Isaiah. Now. that is one sentence but we can have more sentences also come into our spirit so in acts 10 19 and 20 remember the time when peter saw that uh, vision in the trance god gave him a couple of sentences so the spirit said to him in acts 10 verses 19 and 20 behold three men are seeking you arise therefore go down and go with them doubting nothing for i have sent them so this much the holy spirit spoke to uh, peter to encourage him to go and uh, the next thing that happened is that he was able to minister to cornelius and his household uh, so what we'll do right now is we will take a break we will come back at uh, 10 am and we will continue i see a question in the chat divya we'll address it uh, right after our break okay so thank you everyone please stay on the same call uh, i'll just stop the recording and uh, i'll see you on the other side of the break thank you